Thanks video, I'll show you guys how to come with the foam last for the volume and also the surface area of my microphone. So, <laughs> this is just a sphere, like a ball, okay? And we'll do this, the general case. So we'll just say the radius is R and we'll be using integrations. So if you're taking Cal2, this is for you guys. And I am saying hi to my Cal2 students as well. If you're in my class, leave a comment down below, let's just say hi, right? Anyway, here we go. We will have to consider the equation of a semicircle. So let me just put this down right here for you guys. We are going to consider y being equal to square root of r squared minus x squared. Because this right here will give us the semicircle. And of course, we are going to go from negative r to r. And of course, to get a 3D version, we will have to take this and rotate about the x-axis. So let me also put that down. Take this and rotate about the x-axis. So the second picture is that we'll just get a ball right here. So let me just put this down. And this is meant to be a 3D ball, okay? So that's the idea. Anyway, let's talk about how to get the volume first. Well, to do the volume, we are going to use the disc method, meaning that look at this ball and just keep cutting like vertical slice. So it's like saying, just like cutting a you know, watermelon and all that stuff. And each slide is going to be a disc, right? So it's just like a small, a very thin cylinder. And let me just draw this right here for you guys first. So it's going to look like this. And let me remind you guys what's the formula for the volume of a cylinder. It's pi r squared times h. But this is slightly different because this is just a small one, right? I will call this to be the phi. And this is, again, we are using a disc or a cylinder, so keep that in mind. In order for us to do this, as you can see from the side, if you look at it from the side, you will get a cross section being a circle. So we need to have the area of a circle, namely pi r squared but we also have to multiply by the height of this cylinder, but it's just a really tiny one, right? So I'll just call that to be thickness, okay? Just a small height. If you would like, you can call this to be dh because it's just a height, right? But anyway, this is the general idea, and now here is the deal. As we can see from our picture, the thickness, namely the small height right here, is just a small change amount in the x-axis. So this will be denoted by dx. And d phi is just like a small change amount in the volume. So that's the notation. Now you just keep that in mind. The r, it's a radius. Of course, you go from the center here, and this time you have to go straight up. And that will be the y value. So the little d phi, you just put a y here and then the dx here, and you pretty much will get the d phi. And to get the whole volume, you integrate it. That's it. So here we go. Let me put down the volume right here for you guys first. The volume of a sphere. Well, pi is still pi, no problem on that. R is the y, but y is not allowed in the x world, so I will just put down this right here for the y. So square root of r squared minus x squared, but don't forget we have to square that, and then we have the dx right here. And of course, we are going to add this up with integration, and integrating this from negative r to r. So this will generate the volume of this sphere. And now we just have to do the dirty work, namely the integration. So here we go. In fact, we can simplify this a little bit because this is an even function. It's symmetrical from left to right. So we can actually just go from 0 to pi, I mean to r, and then double the result. So we'll do that right here. Let me put down 2 because I'm going to double the result if we integrate it from 0 to r, okay? And the pi is just a constant multiple, so we can put it on the outside. And the square and the square root, of course, they cancel each other nicely. So the inside here is just r squared minus x squared. And then we just have to integrate this guy. So now we have 2 pi and then Integrating r squared in the x world, r is a constant, so we get r squared times x. Next, minus the integral of x squared in the x world, we get one third x cubed. That's pretty much it. And we will have to go from 0 to r. And then we are going to put the r first and then minus the x. So we see we have 2 pi all the way in the front. Put the r here, we get r squared times 
this r in red, and then minus one third r to the third power. And the good thing is that because now this is zero, when you're putting zero into this x and x, you get zero. So you minus a big zero like this, pretty much. And we just have to clean this up a little bit. This is just two pi, and you have r to the third power, and this is minus one third r to the third power. Combine like terms. This is like saying three over three. So you have two over three r to the third power. Two over three times the two, you get four over three. Let me just write that down right here. And we have the pi, of course, and we still have the r to the third power. So, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the formula for the volume of a sphere. So, this is really cool. And now, before we continue, maybe you guys can comment down below and let us know. Do you think that to find the surface area in terms of its integration steps, is the integration steps harder or easier? So leave a comment down below and let us know. But anyway, this is it. Now, moving on to the surface area. For the surface area, it's slightly different. You are not going to be using a disk, right? And the reason is because if you use the disk, then this is just dx. If you add all the dx, if you get like a rectangles around it, that's not right. What you are going to do is, you actually have to use like a cone, but you chop it off. This is called the frost tome. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, you're going to put this right there, right? So you're going to see a picture like that. Notice you have the side being slanted. And because of that, you have to look at what we call the DL, which is just a small change amount in the arc length, right? And of course, you still have to have the radius and all that. But let me just write this down right here for you guys. We'll call this to be ds, right? This right here is ds for the surface area. And this is just a small change in the surface area on the sphere. And you use this kind of shape to get the approximation and you just integrate it and you get the whole thing. Anyway, first, what you have to know is you have to find the radius of, the, of this thing from the center to here. Though. So check out my other video for detailed explanation. But I'll just put on a general formula for you guys, which you have to do 2 pi r. r is the radius. Thankfully, pretty much the same thing like this, because we saw the r earlier. Another thing you have to do is you multiply by dl, right? Again, the thickness, the thickness earlier was the dx. But this time, we have to find the dl. And for the dl, it depends on the situation to see which version that we are going to use. Okay, check out my other video for detailed explanation. DL, in our case, because we have y as a function of x, so we'll be using this version. Let me just put this down. DL is the square root of 1 plus dy dx square and then the dx on our side. So this right here is for the DL, okay? So that's pretty much the idea. Now here is the surface area, so capital S. Here we go. 2 pi is still 2 pi, no problem on that. R is again the y, which is that, which is the square root of r squared minus x squared. And then this is the dl, right? So I will have to put this down right here. I will have to open another square root. Yeah, huh? And then 1 plus. Well, we also have to find out what dy dx is. That's you know, the derivative time. So I come back here, do our usual derivative business, dy dx here, and the derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 times the square root of the inside. And we multiply by the derivative of the inside because of the chain rule. So look at the inside, the derivative of r squared is 0, the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. And the good thing is that the twos cancel out here and here. So with that being said, we are going to put this right here for the parentheses inside, right here, right? Inside the parentheses right here. So we get negative x over the two, is on, the, the, the two is out already, right? So we have the square root, r squared minus x squared, like that, and square that. 
and we have the dx on our side. Again, we use this version because y is a function of x. That's our uh, equation. So that's pretty much it. This is for the ds part. And we have to add them up, going from negative r to r, look for the x values. Right? We are in the x world. So we'll just have to integrate this from negative r to r. And now we'll just have to integrate this guy by hand. So first, we are going to do the same trick right there. I will be integrating this from 0 to r, but I will double the result, OK? So we will have 2 right here, and then integrating this from 0 to r. And you see that we have the 2 pi. That's just a constant multiple. Let's put that in the front. So this is going to give us 4 pi in a second. And then right here, we still have this guy. So let me just write it down. And now it's about time for us to simplify this. It's actually not that bad. We'll see. Open the bigger square root. This right here is 1. And then we see we have to add. This is negative x squared. We just get x squared over when we have the square root squared. Of course, they cancel. So we have r squared minus x squared like this. And then we still have the dx on the outside like this. Of course, we can just combine the fractions inside and hope for the best. Anyway. This is 1. We multiply the bottom and the top by r squared minus x squared. And let's do the same here. We can clean out things pretty nicely. You'll see. OK, 2 times 2 is 4. That's the easy part, huh? 4 pi. Integral from 0 to r. This is still the same. Square root of r squared minus x squared. And open the bigger square root. OK. The denominator is still, of course, r squared minus x squared. And inside, on the top here, r squared minus x squared plus x squared. Of course, this and that will cancel each other out. That's very nice, huh? So let me just cancel them out. I just have the r squared right here. Very, very nice. Now, here is the deal. Check this out. When you have the square root of a fraction, in this case here, we can just look at the square root of the top and then the square root of the bottom. And this and that are the same. We can cancel them out very nicely. So the truth is that in terms of integration steps, this right here is actually easier than that. Just a little bit. It's not that bad at all either, right? Anyway, so we see that we have 4 pi. And then we have to integrate from 0 to r. But notice. We have to do the square root of r squared. Of course, they cancel out again. That's nice. So we just have this r. It's just a constant. We can put that in the front as well. OK? And then we have to put on the dx. And this is like saying we are integrating 1 in the x world. That's that bad at all. This is 4 pi r. Integrating 1 in the x world, we get x. And we go from 0 to r, putting r for x, you just get r, so we get 4 pi, this r, times this r. And then minus putting 0 here, you just get 0. In the end, of course, altogether, this is just 4 pi r squared. And that's the surface area of a sphere.